Well, as we wake up this morning, many of us are burdened. Some of us have personal burdens that as we wake up this morning, we are looking at some situations that we are so upset about. We don't know how they're going to be resolved. There's people that we're worried about and just our own personal lives have enough stuff in them to bring us to a place of just hopelessness. Others of us are, are still very concerned about the transmission of this uh, horrible virus. Some of us know people who are sick. Some, people, uh, some of us know people who are grieving uh, after having lost people that they loved from this virus. Others of us are having our eyes open that maybe this world that we live in, this country that we live in, that there's much more injustice than we ever realized. And that's beginning to make us feel uncomfortable and it's calling us to action. Others of us are really upset by the, the violence that we see some people perpetrating in this whole week that we're in the middle of. Others of us feel like there's so many things changing that we just can't settle down. There's just so many things that are up in the air and the world is spinning. And, and in all of that, I want to take you to a scripture this morning. It's out of the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11. I want to read you some of this, and then I want to just share a song with you that God gave me many years ago. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Now, you're not going to hear a message from me to try to ignore any of the personal pain that you're going through. I'm certainly not going to tell you to ignore being careful and safe with this transmission of the virus. I'm not going to tell you to ignore the injustice that is clearly a part of our reality. I'm not going to tell you to ignore your feelings of anxiety. Instead, I want to call you, and I'm going to let the Word of God call you to faith, which is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And you're about to hear a vision that God has for us, a place for our eyes to look that's going to help us be able to look at our personal struggles and this virus and the injustice and the violence and the world spinning around seemingly out of control with a totally different perspective. And so I want you to listen carefully and think about where your eyes can be placed this morning. Faith is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what is visible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain, and then he talks about Enoch. And then it talks about Noah and Abraham. And on down it goes. And I wanted you to zone in here to uh, these beautiful verses. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. So again, we hear about Abraham, we hear about Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and Moses and their lives of faith, about Rahab, the prostitute. We hear about Gideon and on and on it goes. All of these people were commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Therefore... Hebrews chapter 12, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. And here's the message I want to share with you today. 
if you want to be able to look with God's eyes and his heart and his perspective on your own personal issues and this virus and the injustice and the violence and all the anxiety you're feeling, I want you to look first at what God has in store and the reality even of heaven that we can experience now, the part of eternal life that we're already experiencing. And then I want you to look at all the stuff of this earth squarely. So hear this song that God gave me a decade or so ago to try to express the truths in this beautiful passage. Better things are coming, better than today. We believe better things are coming, for you are not ashamed to be our God. This life's not all we are living for We yearn for the life to come And you give us hope in every step We cry, your will be done We will overcome We will overcome Better things Better than today We believe better things are coming So you are not ashamed to be our God And we walk by faith and not by sight For the place you have made for us We are coming to the city of God The home of the righteous one give you a new perspective, new sight, new attitude, new future that inspires you to look at the presence. And then you can see better about how God is calling you to live in the present, in the real world. You can see the vision God has for the future so that you can know more of how to live today. So I leave you again with this powerful, powerful encouragement. Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders 
and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorned in its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Fix your eyes on Jesus.